Welcome into the Smoke and Bee, our NHL podcast for Nesson.com. I'm your host, Rachel Holt. I'm joined by Nick Goss. And Nick, we talk predominantly about the Bruins on this podcast. We don't make any bones about it. But we're very happy to do so at this point because they've given us a lot of good stuff to talk about. This, this is the best they've played in a few <laughs> years. So, yes, yeah, a great time to talk about Bruins hockey. The state of the bees. The bees are 28, 10, and 8. They had a big 3-2 win over the Devils at TD Garden last night. Let's hear what David Pasternak had to say after the game. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we, we meet tomorrow and we get better and get better start. But uh, we got two points uh, tonight and, and uh, that's mostly important thing so uh, as soon as 12 o'clock turn and we'll think of an Odava and, and get better for the start. So as we heard from Pasta he said we have two points tonight and that's the most important thing this team keeps on getting points and they keep on rolling. I want to talk about that game first off. Um, New Jersey was finishing a back-to-back -back, so to their credit they had a tall task ahead of them to face the Bruins yes. on the road um, while they didn't necessarily have their legs or they probably you know weren't feeling full strength at that point but they they did look strong, and they are going for that top spot in the Metropolitan Division, so they had a lot on the line in this one. Uh, Marshan said after, they publicly had an open or a closed-door meeting last night, so we knew that they were going to come out hard and play a good game, and they did. So what did you think about the overall effort of the Bruins last night? It was solid. I mean, like you mentioned, the Devils are really up against it. Uh, you know, they're 2-6-2 two, and, two, and, and three games, three losses in a row. Uh, they were in first place in the Metro. They slipped to second. Uh, they needed these two points, and they're without their best player, Taylor Hall. Uh, goaltender Corey Schneider left the game with an injury, so their backs are really up against it. So, you know, for the Bruins, you know, to take their best punch, uh, they've been playing a lot of games lately, for them to take their best punch and, and grind out a 3-2 a win was pretty impressive. We mentioned that the Bruins, they got off to a slow start. They did get the win, but a main reason that they did get the win, it was Tuka Rask. This guy had 37 saves. After the game, head coach Bruce Cassidy said, um, Rask was the best player that night. The victory extends Rask's personal point streak to 17 games. We'll get on the team's point streak in a little bit. Um, what do you? What did you like most about Rask's play last night? Uh, his rebound control was fantastic. He wasn't giving uh, any rebounds up that Devils could pounce on. Uh, he was great on the penalty kill as well. Uh, in his last 17-game point streak for Rask, he's 15-0-2, 1.62 goals against average, 941 save percentage. He's vaulted him. We'll talk about uh, mid-season awards later. He's vaulted himself into the Vezina conversation for sure. Uh, he's two shot shutouts in that span as well. He was fantastic. They did not play well in front of him. They gave up way too many scoring chances. And he bailed them out, and uh, you're going to need your goaltender to do that when you don't have your best game, and that's what he did. As a whole, there's just a great energy about this team. I don't know if you can feel it just watching on TV, but as someone who's in the locker room at the games um, and as an outsider looking in, I just sense this camaraderie with this young team. I mean, it could go either way when you have a couple of young stars, but it seems like they're really buying into this program. They really are. And I think Bruce Cassidy deserves a lot of credit for that. He's really created a culture where it, it's okay for the young players to play a prominent role and speak up and say what they need to. Uh, and they, they have tremendous leadership from their veterans. I mean, they're, you won't find too many better leaders in the, in the NHL than Patrice Bergeron, Zidane Chara, Brad Marchand has become much more vocal player. He's uh, become a veteran in this league as well. So the locker room culture they've created has really allowed for this camaraderie to, to really uh, muster up. Talking about this uh, locker room culture, check out this post from David Poshnok on Instagram. Now, some of the guys attended the AFC Championship game at Gillette Stadium on Sunday, and uh, this is them. They, the big group shot here, a lot of the guys from the team. So it's nice to see. It can only mean good things moving forward if this team gets along, if they like each other. Uh, has us feeling positive for postseason results here. It's always good to see them hanging out outside of the, outside of the rink. Yes, and, and I know the Patriots probably appreciate that too. I always love seeing the different teams supporting mm -hmm. each other in Boston. I think that's great. Um, there isn't too much negative things to talk about with the team right now. The only thing of note that I can think of is uh, Boston now has now allowed the first goal in six straight games. Obviously not the starts that they have wanted. Bruce Cassidy touched on the team's slow start after the game yesterday. They were a desperate team. Uh, or I shouldn't say desperate, that's not fair. They're more urgent than us, uh, more urgency. You know, Nick, on the other side of that, you could say that it's a positive sign that this team keeps on getting down in the beginning, but they're fighting back. I mean, do you have that take? Yeah, I think it's, it's a bit concerning that they've given up the first goal in so many games here, but I really like the resiliency and the way they've been able to bounce back. Uh, a lot of teams, when they keep going down at game after game, they start to really get down on themselves, and they play from behind, and they get away from their structure and what they want to do. But the Bruins just stick to their system. Uh, they don't get away from what Cassidy wants them to do, and they've been rewarded for that. Their perseverance and resilience has, has been key for them in this streak. 
We've mentioned uh, Tuka Rask's personal point streak. Let's talk about the team's point streak now. This is highly impressive. The Bruins have extended their point streak to 17 at games, going 13-0-4 during that stretch. They've outscored opponents during this 67-31. It's incredible. 67-31. Um, as you can see in this tweet from the NHL's Twitter account, this is the first time they've done this in 35 years. And for those curious, the franchise record is uh, 23 games for a point streak. So they've got some way to go to get there, they but do. still they're, they're closing in on that. Who or what poses the biggest threat to ending this point streak? I think it could be potentially injuries. We'll touch on Charlie McAvoy. His absence is, is huge. Uh, we'll see what Brad Marchand has a hearing for his, uh, his elbow in the game uh, against the Devils. If he misses any time, that could pose a threat too. And they also have a, you know, a, a decently tough schedule coming up. I believe they have the Blues coming up, uh, the Maple Leafs, the Ducks, who are fighting for a playoff spot. So I think the schedule is getting tougher, and that always poses a threat. So I think a combination of those factors uh, could, be a, could be an issue. One of the main reasons for this point streak is, of course, that top line. I mean, you could argue this is the best line in the NHL. They have Patrice Bergeron, David Pasternak, and uh, Brad Marchand. Now, each player has scored at least 20 goals so far this season. In this tweet from the Bruins, they shared, the Bees are the only team in the NHL with three 20 goal scorers this season. Well, actually, right after this tweet got sent out, the Dallas Stars <laughs> were able to accomplish that same feet with the line that includes one of Boston's former stars, Tyler Sagan. Um, but anyways, which one of these guys has been most valuable to the Bruins in that top line? I have to, I have to go with Bergeron. I mean, the, he's, he's the, the cog that makes it run, not only with his playmaking ability, but on the power play, penalty killing, he's just phenomenal. And what he does, a lot of the dirty work behind the net to, to give chances for Pasternak and Marchand. Marchand does that too. Um, but Pastor, uh, Bergeron, I think, is, the, is certainly the most valuable player on that line. He's Not only can he score goals, but he wins face-offs to keep possession in. So I think I'd have to go with him. Man, if you watch back from our first podcast of this year, we wouldn't be talking about the division standings. I mean, we couldn't have foresaw this conversation happening. The Bruins are in the President's Trophy race, which is just incredible, incredible turnaround from the team. In the Atlantic Division, the Bruins are slowly but surely cre creeping up on yeah. the Tampa Bay Lightning. I said not too long ago that nobody would catch the Lightning. I look, the Bruins have made me look as a little bit of a fool right now. <laughs> uh, the President's Trophy, I don't, you can say it's cursed. I don't know if, I mean, there have been a few teams, the Blackhawks recently won it, uh, with no one the Stanley Cup when they won the President's Trophy, but and the Capitals have won it several times and we know how they crumble in the playoffs. But yeah, the Bruins are, have, have, have a legitimate chance to catch the Lightning. They're five points back with two games in hand. Uh, they played the Lightning very well. Uh, so those head-to-head -head games will certainly be important. And you know, they got a real shot to finish uh, top the East. Well, Tampa Bay, they have 69 points. The Bruins have 64. And sitting behind them, the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, have 57 points. So there's a pretty comfortable lead there between them and the Bruins. I mean, so do you think that the Bruins, they have a solid shot at finishing atop this division? Yeah, I think uh, M Money Puck is an analytic site. I think they give the Bruins a 99.6% chance to make the playoffs. Uh, I'd be shocked if Toronto fell. I don't see Detroit or Montreal. They're both 11 points back. I don't see them getting anywhere close to the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, I think we'll probably see a, a Bruins Leafs uh, first round series, which would be phenomenal, especially what happened a few years ago. Um, you know, two original six teams, arrivals going at it. So I, I think the Bruins can get to first, but I think Tampa Bay will hold them off. But, you know, the Leafs Bruins playoff series, I think, would be the fans would love that. The sure. only teams in the league with more points than the Bruins at this point are Tampa Bay, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Vegas Golden Knights. And as we've talked about before, uh, the Bruins, due to their schedule, they've played a lot less games mm -hmm. than some of these teams. For instance, the Jets, they've played uh, three less, I believe it is, than the Jets at yes. this point. So, I mean, certainly some, some opportunities to make up some ground there and get <laughs> even more points. Um, let's talk about the injury report. You mentioned that uh, injury to Charlie McAvoy. He's out for two weeks following a heart procedure. How will his absence affect the team? We know this is a big one. Yeah, McAvoy, I think, is their best defenseman. Uh, Char at age 40 has been phenomenal, but McAvoy plays, in, he plays great in every zone. His playmaking, passing is, is huge for generating scoring chances. Defensively, he's very sound, doesn't take a lot of risks. Uh, his skating allows him to, to skate out of trouble in, in the defensive zone. He's, got the, he's averaging the second most time on ice in uh, 22 uh, in change. That's, that's a lot to replace. Uh, Kevin Miller came into the lineup recently after battling an illness. He's going to have to step up. McQuaid came back recently. He has to step up, uh, particularly, on, particularly on the penalty kill. Uh, and Torrey Krug needs to be more of a factor offensively. He started to be that the last few games. So that's a good sign for the Bruins. Uh, but it's going to have to be a team effort because McAvoy, like I said, he's their best defenseman. And usually when teams lose their best D-man, it's, it's a huge loss. So 
uh, it's going to have to be a team effort here. Well, we just talked about how good this guy's line is, but Patrice Bergeron is feeling under the weather. He did not skate in practice on Wednesday. Um, just It looks like he's trying to get some rest at this point. Um, it seemed like Bruce Cassidy said he believes that he will play, but if he doesn't, what does this mean for the team? Well, it's a, it's a huge loss in, in all phases. I mean, he plays so much on 5-on-5, five five, but he's integral part of their penalty kill and power play. Um, you know, they've been phenomenal in those areas. Uh, seventh in the power play this season, third in penalty killing. Uh, and like I said earlier, he's, he's the key cog on that first line. You know, I would imagine that Spooner or Krejci would go up to that line uh, if Bergeron was out. But, you know, hopefully they can get him some rest. And maybe if he does play, I'm sure Cassidy will temper his minutes a bit, uh, keep him at 15 instead of 20. So there are certain things they can do uh, in-game to, you know, give him a little, little bit of a rest. And we'll include him in this section, Brad Marchand, because he may be out for a game or a couple of games. Now, he has a hearing at some point with the NHL's Department of Player Safety. Um, maybe it already happened. We haven't received any word on what the decision was, but it's in regards to a hit on the Devils forward, Marcus Johansson. Here's what Marchand had to say after the game. I don't know, you got you guys hurt. collided, yeah, happened. and then he went right off. I don't know. You got hurt. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what happened. Uh, I took a shot. And I don't know, I tumbled down and he was hurt, so I don't know if what happened there, but you know, hopefully he's okay. So obviously the hit doesn't look good when it you watch not. the film. Um, Marshand, on top of that, he has a history. He's been suspended five times in his nine NHL seasons. Um, he has nine goals and 15 assists during this B's point streak. He's an integral part of their offense. I mean, Cassidy said he didn't have a strong take on the hit, and players should be able to protect himself. He's sticking up for his player there. But they are preparing for the worst. Uh, what are your thoughts first on the hit? I would, I would be surprised if he avoided a suspension. I mean, you look at he's suspended five, uh, five times in his career, uh, three of them since 2015. He's been fined three times. Now. It looked, you could, he could make the case, and I'm sure he will in the hearing, that he was trying to avoid the goaltender. Uh, maybe Johansson was coming at him. He thought Johansson was going to hit him into the goaltender. There is, the elbow does get out, and that's, it's not a good sight. Um, and given his history, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets suspended. Um, so I think that would be my take on it. it, it does, he could make the case he was trying to avoid the goaltender, but I'm not sure the NHL would buy that. Okay, we'll of course keep you updated when we receive word of what the decision is um, there. Next up, the team plays the Senators on the road on Thursday night. Then they have the All-Star break, so their next game after that is their home against the Anaheim Ducks on Tuesday the 30th. Um, it's a time in the NHL for all teams to rest. Do you think this break comes at a good time or a bad time? For the Bruins. Yeah, you know, I think it comes at a good time. Their, their schedule is about to get really heavy. They play a lot of games in the second half against really good teams. They have a Western Canada trip coming up that will be taxing. Uh, and they have some guys there on the mend. I mean, Kevin Miller's been getting over an illness. Uh, Patrice Bergeron in illness. Uh, McAvoy's out. Uh, McQuaid is just coming back from an injury. So I think some rest uh, before they really gear up for this tough stretch uh, will do them well. One guy who won't be able to rest this week is Brad Marchand. He's the Bruins' lone representative, or actually he, maybe he will be able to rest due to some <laughs> suspensions, but uh, he's the Bruins' lone representative in the All-Star game. Honestly, it could have been Bergeron or Pasternak, but he was the one who was chosen. So Marchand said after the game, classy guy, I know I wouldn't be having the year I'm having without them talking about his line mates. Both deserve to be here as well. It's an honor to come into the rink every day and be on their line. Um, so the Bruins have one representative. The Tampa Bay Lightning have the most representatives, uh, taking up four of the 11 spots in the Atlantic Division. The All-Star Game is January 28th in Tampa Bay, but these are always fun to watch, especially when there's a guy like Marshan in there who, uh, you know, people back here root for. Yeah, it's, it's the, since they went to the three-on-three -three, uh, tournament, I think that's really cool. And there's a cash incentive for the players as well, so they usually give it their all, uh, unlike the NBA All-Star Game. Uh, so it, it's been a good, good change for the, for the NHL. I think the fans really enjoy it, and the, the Saturday night festivities have gotten better as they've uh, made the, event, the events more, uh, more interesting and difficult for the players. And the skills competition, of course, yeah. pretty cool to watch as well. Around the league, let's talk about some things going on here. First, this is kind of neat. The emergency goalie plan. Now, on Tuesday, Florida's number one goalie, James Reimer, suffered an injury, which meant the backup had to go in. A new rule is that all home teams are required to have a goalie on hand in the stands who can serve as an emergency backup at any time for either team. So the change this year is that the guy actually has to be sitting in the stands, physically in the stands. So let's go to the tweet here. The Dallas Stars had a picture of this guy named Thomas Hodges, who was sitting in the stands with his friends at the time. He had to go get his equipment 
and then go get dressed in case the backup goalie gets injured. He never ended up going in. I wanted him to go in because that would have been a great story, but uh, just a wild concept that this kid's sitting in the stands kind of as a fan, sitting around his <laughs> friends, and then he just gets thrust into this position where he may be going into an NHL game. I really want to see this happen someday. <laughs> like, you don't want to see any injuries, so I don't want these backups to, to, to get hurt, but I think it would be really cool to see you know, how it affects the game, how it affects the players in front of them, the players shooting on them. It would be a really interesting development. I, I, there's really nothing else like this in sports where a fan in, in, in the stands is, is waiting to go in and could potentially go in. And with, you know, hockey is obviously a violent game, so you never know what's going to happen. But I, I thought it was really interesting. And, you know, I, I don't know if, how nervous he was, but uh, I'd be shaken if I was there, he's, maybe going into the game. He said after <laughs> that the people around him were more nervous than he was, which yeah. I can see. Um, so, you know, I don't know how good of a hockey player Thomas Hodges is. I have to. I guess that he is pretty good, but it seems like a lot of these teams just really don't care who that goalie is in that instance. I mean, only two teams, the Kings and the Devils, held tryouts for their emergency backup goalie. Seems like all the other teams are like, oh, yeah, we'll pick one, whatever, whatever guy works, because it never happens. Right, but and the chances of it happening are so slim, they really have to pay too much attention to it. But, uh, but you never know, maybe, maybe. One, uh, maybe one of these guys goes <laughs> in an important game in the playoff race. We'll see, but Thomas Hodges, he was ready. He was, he was going to give it a go. Uh, Mid-season awards, because it is that time where the All-Star break is coming up. Nick, you submitted your Professional Hockey Writers Association uh, mid-season awards ballot, so I want to ask you for your quick take on some of these awards going on. Um, the Hart Trophy, yeah, MVP. The Hart Trophy, um, I think Patrice Bergeron has a real shot at it. Um, I think he's, he's been playing fantastic this season. Um, you know, they look at the Norris Trophy, I think Drew Doughty, the, the Kings should win it. Uh, I think he should have won it last year, but Ben Burns did. Uh, the Calder Trophy is a really interesting race. Uh, Matthew Barzal has been phenomenal. Uh, you got Malcolm Subban as a goaltender. Uh, Brock Bozer uh, from Vancouver has done phenomenally as well. I think Charlie McAvoy has a real shot as well. Defensemen usually don't get a lot of play in this award because they don't put up the points, and that's what a lot of voters look at. But I think he's been phenomenal as well. The Selkie Trophy, they might as well just rename the Patrice Bergeron Award because <laughs> he's going to win it again. Uh, he'd be the first player ever to win it five times. The Vezina Trophy race is very interesting. Andre Vasilevsky of the Lightning uh, is the top choice right now. Uh, the stats prove it out. They have the, they also have the best record in the East. Uh, but like we said earlier, Tuukka Rass has been phenomenal of late. I think he's really making a push, and he's already won the award as well. Um, so I think it's going to be a fantastic. Uh, the award races are wide open this year. There's no clear favorite in any of them. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of uh, good competition at the end of the year to see who gets these. And a lot of Bruins in the mix. Yeah. So it's always fun to see here. I'm giving my midseason award not to a player, but to a team, the Vegas Golden Knights, for their Twitter account. Can I do that? Yeah. Is there? Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right. I'm making up this award right now. Um, if you haven't checked out this Twitter account, you need to go there because this team, they're cocky, they're fun, they troll other teams, and they can do so because. Their team is actually really good this year, surprisingly. They have 32 wins, uh, so they can aff have afforded the, their Twitter account the, the ability to just troll other people, and they've done a great job at it. They acknowledge the Vegas flu, which is where other teams come in, and they seem to have a tough time uh, yeah. playing away in Vegas. Now, the idea behind it is maybe they're having a little too fun. I, I mean, I don't know. I maybe mean, they're having a little too fun in Vegas the <laughs> night before. But this tweet from the account, um, we have only lost in regulation at home one time in the last 102 days. So that kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, they have a 19-2-2 <laughs> and two home record. Uh, the only other team that comes close is Winnipeg. And... Uh, a lot of the hotels are on the Strip, so I, I've heard that a lot of teams are staying on the Strip. Uh -oh. And uh, I've never been to Vegas, but I've been told there's a lot to do on the Strip. It is amazing there. So I know you've been there, so <laughs> you know. And uh, so, I, yeah, that home record is amazing. I'm interested to see in the playoffs how that happens, because you're there for multiple days. Yeah. And, you know, got two games in a row, whatever. But uh, yeah, Vegas, Vegas does real. lose its appeal at a, a certain point. Mm -hmm. So maybe after a couple days, the other teams will start to do a lot better. But um, some other tweets from that account, just recent ones. I could go through and, and pick out the best of the best, and you'd be laughing. But uh, oh man, Flava Flav is here. What is even going on? <laughs> and then uh, they pulled the goalie. All we have to do is just tap it in, tap it in. No, they're they're really funny. So they get my award. Um, all for the Vegas Golden Knights Twitter account. It's, it's fantastic. It's topical, it's catchy, it's funny. Um, and, they, and they, like you said, they have, they're one of the best teams in the league, so they can talk as much trash as they want. And they certainly but if, can. But if they get bounced in the playoffs, you're going to have to be prepared to take it a little bit. Well, I'm just excited to see their tweets if that does happen because yeah. uh, well, they take it in stride. Yeah. Um, okay, that does it for this episode of The Spoken Bee. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And for all of your hockey news, for all of your Bruins news, make sure you uh, keep it on Nesson.com.